yeah, so this talk is actually about cutting edge research coming out of our, of our lab. Um, and it is about uh, optimization in general adver adversarial networks. And um, there's hundreds of papers coming on GANs, so it's actually a quite a, an active area of research. And uh, I think actually this uh, work is uh, going to uh, help a lot, so I'm very excited to tell, talk to you about. Um, it's going to appear at uh, NeurIPS in December in Vancouver, and the title of the paper is Reducing Noise in GAN Training with Variance Reduced Extra Gradient. And this is mainly work from uh, Tatiana Chavdarova, uh, who was doing an internship at Mila, and she was from EPFL, and my student, uh, Gauthier Gidel, uh, and uh, it was also a collaboration with Francois Fleuret at EPFL. All right, so. Let's just start with a, a quick review of what generative adversarial networks are. Um, basically, this is uh, to do generative modeling. So we want to get a model of the data such that we are able to, say, sample from our model to generate new data, perhaps to answer questions. And uh, a typical fancy application that people have used it recently is just to generate pretty pictures of people. Uh, and the way it works is we start with a standard, uh, a very easy distribution, like a Gaussian or uniform distribution. And then we plug it in a neural network such that the, 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 the distorted Gaussian becomes something like uh, an image. Okay? And, so the, uh, and we call this a generator. So the neural network will be the generator. And then the question is, how do you train a neural network such that what you get by starting from a Gaussian or a uniform distribution, you get actually samples which look like uh, real people. Uh, and that was the uh, suggestion by uh, Jan Goodfellow and all in 2014. It was to set up a game. So the, the way it's trained is we will uh, pick, uh, s uh, have the generator uh, play a game against a classifier, which we call the discriminator. And the role of the classifier, it's just another neural network, is to distinguish the, the simulated data from the true data set. Okay, and and so the classifier is trained, so it also has to to be trained to to classify uh, fake data versus true data. While the generator is trying to fool the classifier, because if the classifier is not able to distinguish real data from fake data, well, the fake data is pretty real. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, and uh, why is it so popular? Well, actually, it works pretty well to, uh, in particular, generate uh, what they call deep fakes. Uh, so, so this is a few years of progress in terms of quality of samples you can get for uh, generating uh, faces. Um, so now, uh, it turns out that this is a game. So the way it's trained is by uh, two players uh, playing against each other. So this is not like standard training of neural networks, supervised learning, where you're just trying to minimize the empirical error of one player. And that changed everything. Um, and actually, that's the, the, perp the, the whole point of our, of, our, of our paper was to uh, highlight certain issues which come from the fact it's a game, traditional approaches have been used, and how to solve that. Okay, So uh, basically, in standard supervised learning, we will have the parameters of our neural network, and we'll try to minimize, say, the training error, uh, and that's how we train. Okay, Again, it's actually not just a simple minimization problem, it's a game. So in the original paper, it was a min-max problem. So the theta g would be the parameter of the generator, theta d would be the parameter of the discriminator, and, and basically they have opposite objectives, so you can write it as a min-max. Okay? More generally, you call it also non-zero-sum game, i.e. you have each player are minimizing their own objective. The two objectives might not have just be a switch, ch uh, sign switch, which is when you get a min-max. And, 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 and a lot of GAN objectives are just like two different objectives like that. They're tied by the fact that they share the same parameters. And um, let me just give you the intuition behind the work, and then I'll, I'll give a bit more of the, the technical aspect. But the, the intuition is that noise creates a lot of issues when you have games. Okay? And what kind of noise are we talking about? In this case, we're just looking from an optimization perspective. We're trying to minimize uh, the training error. Um, and uh, in most neural network training uh, algorithms, you use SGD. You use a, a small mini batch of examples. You compute the gradient on uh, the training error for these, and then you update your parameter and you repeat. You, rep you get a mini batch. The mini batch can be seen as the mini batch gradient can be seen as a noisy version of the whole gradient on the whole training set. Okay. And when you do minimization, it's not a problem. So basically, if you look at the negative gradient direction, so uh, the minimum is where the gradient is equal to zero, and it you know the gradient kind of points towards the minimum, and, and in green here would be the true gradient, and purple would be 
noisy version of the gradient, and even though they don't point exactly towards the minimum, they're still pointing towards the, the roughly the right direction, in particular, their, their, uh, towards a sub-level set. So you're still minimizing the objective while you do that. So that's, that's actually why SGD works per perfectly fine. But now when you have a game, it's not the same picture at all, okay? So here, theta would be the parameter of the generator, and phi would be the parameter of the discriminator, so a different agent. And so you could think of each agent moving in their negative gradient direction to minimize their own objective. But the, it's two different objectives, so these gradients don't really align with each other. So here what happens is you have a gradient component for the, the, the generator and a different gradient component for the, the, the discriminator. And the kind of, if you would just follow these gradients by making updates, you would circle around. Okay, in some sense, like, the, it kind of makes sense, like you make a move, the, the opponent make a, a different move, and then you keep correcting, and then you just circle around. And um, the equilibrium point, the stationary point of this game is when the gradient is equal to zero, which is still the star here, but you see it's, it's a very different dynamics. And, and in particular, uh, which, oh, by the way, that's also why if you just do gradient method, it doesn't converge, it's just circle around. Okay, so that's already not a really good idea. Uh, and then moreover, if you had a bit of noise, now, half of the time, you would actually get away from the, the point you're trying to get, the, 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 the equilibrium here, uh, which actually can diverge. And in particular, in our paper, we actually uh, present an example where if you use the standard stochastic uh, optimization method people have used, it, they all diverge. None of them actually converge, okay? So that's a huge problem. And so then the whole question is, how do you deal with this noise, okay, in order to, to, to get to this uh, equilibrium of our game? Um, and there's also empirical evidence that that might be an issue because there was a paper at iClear 2019 uh, with a method called BigGAN, which had very impressive uh, results on ImageNet. And one of the main thing that they've, one of the main contributor to the improved performance, which I, I forgot the number, but if you look at, they have a table of all the different things they tried, and then one which had the biggest jump was to use bigger mini batches. Okay, so when you increase the number of points in your mini batch, you decrease the noise of your mini batch gradient compared to the batch gradient. Okay, so that's kind of also uh, an indicator that might be uh, relevant. And so to sum up, when you have these stochastic game, you have two aspects. The first thing that you need to, 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 to take care of is that it's, it's, you have adversarial component, which gives you these rotation because of the min-max, which is not like in standard minimization. And so uh, that's where we will uh, use uh, an algorithm called the extra gradient method, coming from the mathematical programming literature so that was proposed in the 70s to actually solve games. Okay, so gradient method, not a good idea for games. Um, and then, how to handle the noise, we will use a standard idea also which has been proposed in optimization literature in the last 15 years, which is called variance reduction. Okay, and so we combine those two techniques together and uh, that's what we tried in this paper. So first, let me just give you the, the quick gist of what the extra grant method is. So the idea is uh, each player, they make their, their, an update by taking a gradient step on their own objective. Um, and here, note that they have different objectives. So the generator would have uh, LG, the discriminator would have a, a different objective, so that's the difference with minimization. Um, and there's a method which is called implicit, which, is, which, solve, which finds uh, stationary points of, this, uh, of these uh, games very uh, uh, efficiently, i.e., I take the gradient not at my current iterate, but at the next iterate where I want to be. So this is actually a... Uh, a, a nonlinear equation, so you know my solution is both as an argument as the next update. So it, it's you cannot solve that efficiently. You need to do an iterative scheme just to compute this update. But if you could do that, it turns out that the convergence uh, analysis of this method is very good. It's super stable for any step size. It converge. It's great. Okay, but it's super expensive to do because you need to do this implicit scheme. So the extragrant method can be seen as a, a first-order approximation of this scheme. You just do Taylor expansion around uh, your previous iterate. And so basically the idea is you will approximate the next iterate with something called an extrapolation by taking one gradient step at your current iterate. And that's what you use to compute your gradient to make the, uh, the final update. Okay, so it's two. So you have to do two updates to do one iteration. So that's why it's called extra gradient. There's like an extra gradient computation. Um, and just doing that, and you can think of this extrapolation step as doing a look ahead step. You think, oh, where is my opponent going to move? And now I will move according to this information. So that's why it stabilized the algorithm. And then instead of sp spiraling uh, like crazy, you will actually, uh, sorry, instead of just rotating, you will actually converge. Um, 
And so it turns out that um, this method uh, uh, is theoretically and empirically faster than the grain method, and it converged on some problems where the grain method would not converge. Okay. All right, so that was extra gradient. Now what about this variance reduction idea? So this is uh, uh, from an idea ca called an algorithm called SVRG, um, proposed by Johnson and Zhang in 2013. And so this is, uh, this is to be used when you have an optimization problem where you have a finite sum of uh, objectives. So for example, you can think here of Xi being the training example. So I have an empirical over my training example, and I want to try to minimize uh, this respect to my parameter W. And um, the idea of, of, of the variance reduction is that you will, uh, it's actually an epoch-based algorithm. So at the beginning of each, every epoch, you will save a snapshot of your parameter, in this case it's a neural network, and compute a batch gradient over a whole training set uh, at this parameter. Okay, so this is super expensive, but you will only do it once every n iteration, so it's, overall it's not, it's just half the speed of the original algorithm. Okay, and then, during this epoch, you will do this standard stochastic update where you use a stochastic gradient at the current parameter. And then you will use a correction. So you will use the, the difference between the batch gradient at your snapshot and the stochastic gradient at your snapshot to kind of correct the effect of the noise. Okay? And in particular, if uh, the snapshot is the same as my current interest, so when you converge, then this, this, this piece will cancel this piece, and all you're left is the batch gradient, which will be zero at the convergence, so that's actually zero variance. Okay, so, it, um, so yeah, so that's the variance reduction, and then what we do is we will just combine this with extra gradient. So basically, we save a snapshot at the beginning of every epoch, then we will com use this variance reduce update both for the extrapolation step and the, pr the, the, updates, uh, the, pr the update step. And then we repeat uh, until it converge, and, it, and we prove in the paper that the, actually uh, the theoretical convergence rate of this algorithm is uh, improving actually over the best rates which existed in the literature. So there's a theoretical improvement. And then let's just see how it does in practice on crazy non-convex problem because all these guarantees are for convex, of course. Um, so I'll just g give you a snapshot of how it works. And so basically, what I'm showing here is the friction inception distance, which is some standard measure of quality of samples that people use for GAN, as a function of the number of iterations of your algorithm. Okay? And this is uh, basically Adam. So people use Adam for training GANs. And you need to tweak the hyperparameters. You need to know what's the step size for uh, uh, the, the each player, what's the momentum parameter, et cetera, et cetera. And these are just different curves for different hyperparameters. Okay? And uh, as you can see, is some actually are really bad. Uh, some will go fairly low, but it turns out that usually what happens is you will get good results, then you go to sleep, you wake up in the morning, and then it has just uh, give gibberish. Okay? And it turns out empirically that to get the best results for GAN, usually you need to get this unstable behavior where it will give go very good samples, and then you need to stop it, because otherwise if you keep going, then it will just diverge. Okay? If you compare this baseline with uh, the stochastic variance reduced extra gradient method, for, and this for a bunch of different hyperparameters. We also have less hyperparameters in this case because we don't have momentum or fancy stuff. Uh, they're, they're all fairly stable, so that's one thing. Some are better than others. You still need to find the right hyperparameters, but at least they're all stable. It turns out that they are, uh, a bit they are still slower, in particular because Adam has adaptive step size, whereas we have not figured out yet how to have adaptive step size. That's an open uh, area of research. All right, for, so takeaways to conclude. Uh, so basically, the noise is more problematic for games, and so uh, that's why we propose uh, to combine this exaggerate method with variance reduction. Uh, in theory, it has the best convergence rates, and so far it has good stability property. I think that uh, if somebody, some people like a deep mind who has a lot of computer computational infrastructure could now test this method, and actually my, the two first authors are at DeepMind right now and doing an internship, so hopefully it will happen. I think uh, you, we might have even prettier pictures in the future. All right, thank you.